Hi, this is Chelsea Dickerson from the Information Management Division within Eagle, and I'm going to walk you through the new drinking water concern form put out by Eagle's Office of the Clean Water Public Advocate. In the future, you will be able to find the concern form on michigan.gov slash clean water through a button on the homepage, as well as a link in the top navigation bar so you can always get to it no matter where you are in the site. Having the link in the top navigation bar will especially help users who may come to the site through pages other than the homepage, such as pages through search results. You can see here if they click that link, they visit this page, which is not the homepage, but they still see that report a concern right in the top navigation bar. Once they're on that page, they will be able to open the form directly. There is a short introduction that explains where the concern will be sent and it has a link to more information on michigan.gov slash clean water. We do have an alert for users informing them that if this is a public health emergency, to please call the Pollution Emergency Alert System, the PEAS hotline. Another important note is that this form can be filled out by the person with the concern themselves, or it may be filled out by someone else, such as a family member, a local official, or an Eagle employee. There is a section at the end that will ask for this information. Before we get started, I want to share an important feature of the form. In addition to English, the entire form is available in both Spanish and Arabic. Simply select the globe in the top left and choose the language. The entire form, questions and answers, will be available in the language you select. This helps us reach even more communities across Michigan this form asks for three groups of information. Information on the nature of the concern, information on the location of the concern, and lastly, information about you. As you answer a question, the next question will appear. This decreases the time needed to load the form, which will help users who may have slower internet connections. Fields with a red asterisk are required, and you will be unable to submit the form if you do not answer one of them. For example, you can see a red box has appeared on the question that you still have to answer, as well as a red error message at the top. The first question is very important as it determines who the concern gets sent to, either Eagle District staff or a local health department. The options are private individual well, community water supply, non-community water supply, and I'm not sure. With private and non-community water supply concerns, a message does pop up informing you that you should contact your local public health department with your concern as they are the ones who regulate that supply. However, if you choose to, you can continue to fill out the form and it will be sent to them on your behalf. If you select community water supply, an additional question will appear asking if you have contacted your local water supplier. If you say no, or you don't know who that is, a helpful note appears indicating you should contact your water supplier first to resolve your concern. It also lets you know if you don't know who that is to look at your water bill, or if you don't have a water bill to contact your association. If you were to say yes, a section does appear allowing you to describe the response from your local water supplier. There is an option further down that will allow you to upload any sort of uh, documents or images that you may have relating to this concern, um, which may be a document containing an email exchange between you and your water supplier. The next question is going to be about the subject of the concern. There are quite a few options and you can select more than one. I'll go down the list and talk about some in detail. We have appearance and or taste of water, lead and copper, leaks, permit and licensing problems, PFAS, water may not be safe to drink, water pressure problems, water testing questions, and other, which does give you an option to describe. Now, depending on what you select here, you may get some additional notes that pop up. If you were to select 
water pressure problems, a couple uh, helpful notes appear in red that explain uh, if you have low pressure or low flow, it has a solution. If you only have one tap, it has a solution here. Some concerns can be dealt with yourself right at home without having to go through any additional people, such as if you have low pressure, you could just remove and clean your aerator. If you were to select lead and copper, an additional field does appear asking if you have a lead service line. The options are yes, no, and I don't know. This is just additional information to help resolve your concern. We also direct you to the michigan.gov slash myleadsafe website for additional information on drinking water. You have an option to fill out information about your concern. Uh, this is actually required. You have a thousand characters. Additional details will be collected, such as what day did this happen or start, if it's something that's uh, continuing to happen. We ask, is this a recurring issue? Um, yes or no. And then right here, these are the optional um, file uploads where you could attach a document such as a PDF or a Word document, uh, as well as an image if you have something that needs to be uploaded as well. Now we've entered the section for location information. The first and only question in this section is, where is this concern located? We ask that you use the search bar to type in an address and then select from the list of suggestions, similar to many other online forms. Simply click in the text box, type in your address and select. You'll notice there are no apartment, unit, or suite numbers that pop up in this list of suggestions. After you select your address, it auto-populates down below the map. We do give you a section to input an apartment, unit, or suite number. For this example, I'll type in apartment 2A. The other information that is auto-populated is the city, the zip code, and the county. The county is the key piece of information here. This is how your concern will get to the right people. Depending on the answer to the very first question in the form, you will see either the Eagle Drinking Water District or Local Health Department. The Eagle Drinking Water District number will appear for community water supply concerns or if you had selected, I'm not sure. If you selected non-community water supply, or a private residential well, you will see the information for the local health department for that county. Next section is about you. You do have the option to remain partially anonymous, but you must at least provide a phone number or email address for Eagle to follow up with your concern. But you can request that this information along with any other contact information is not shared with your local water department. If you select no, you do not wish to remain anonymous, additional information will appear, such as your first name, last name, and if your contact information is different than the address of your concern. Now, if you are filling this form out for someone else, the information in this section is for the person making the complaint. We do not need the address of say, the Eagle employee filling this form out for a resident. If you are submitting this form on behalf of someone else, simply select yes down here at this question, and an additional question will appear asking for your name. Simply enter your name and your relationship or organization in parentheses in this field. Select the date that you're submitting this concern and go ahead and press submit. You can see I forgot a field there, turned red and took me right back to it. Once submitted, you'll receive a confirmation screen and information on who will follow up with you regarding your concern. 
There is, again, the reminder about if this is a public health emergency to please call our pollution emergency alert system. If your concern was about a community water supply, an EGLE staff member will follow up with you. If your concern was about a private individual well, someone from the relevant local public health department will follow up with you. After this, you are able to select to fill out another form if you have an additional concern. Um, otherwise, that is it.